Um, I'm uh, Audrey White. I'm a member of Riverside uh, Constituency Labour Party. I joined with, um, you know, like many of us did with um, when Jeremy Corbyn um, became the, the leader of the party and changed the whole politics uh, in, in, in this country. So um, and what happened very quickly afterwards was that uh, we, we could see that there was a, a growing um, resentment against um, the whole shift in the, the politics and the political viewpoint uh, against austerity. And the uh, you know the the sort of the members of the uh, Labour Party that existed at the time they obviously you know resented very much um, the shift in politics and couldn't see how necessary it was to 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 fight austerity and to fight um, you know the, the 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 rush to war that uh, had been the mainstay of the uh, the Labour Party uh, up until that time. And I'd been a founding member of the um, Stop the War movement with um, working with uh, Tony Benn, uh, George Galloway, um, uh, uh, Lindsay German, um, John Rees, uh, and, and, and all of those people in the movement, in, including um, in, uh, Jeremy Corbyn to a, to a lesser extent. But I've obviously I've marched with him at the front with the, carrying the Stop the War banner and I was on the National Committee. So... You know, my politics were different, and a lot of our politics were different from those that were already, you know, in the Labour Party at that time. And I would not have wanted to have been a member of the party before Jeremy Corbyn. So we were, you know, we were really um, disappointed that uh, they couldn't they couldn't just address the arguments, and uh, because of their failure to address the arguments and discuss the political changes. That were desperately needed. Um, it, it resorted in, um, well, how can I explain it? It, it? Being targeted, being targeted in different ways from anonymous people, uh, anonymous, um, anonymously authored documents, and so on. And it, it, it culminated in um, uh, attacks this time last year uh, in, in the Jewish Chronicle, where four articles were written about me. And those articles, uh, were absolutely, they were ludicrous, actually, but they were also designed to discredit me. But not just discredit me, to discredit Riverside constituency and to infer that, well, not to infer, they stated as a fact, that uh, RMP had been um, bullied and in constantly interrupted by rowdy members of the constituency. And um, that wasn't true. So I really had to, uh, because it was used then, of course, to discredit, uh, to try to discredit, and it did, um, Jeremy Corbyn himself. And it wasn't true. Uh, we we were very respectable of RMP, but we really did have different, um, different views, political views from here. We were opposed to her politics, even on local issues like not supporting the women's hospital. We had differences. So, um, but we were, we actually uh, drew back actually from even um, confronting uh, Louise Elman because of the atmosphere that had been created, you know. So we, we didn't, we found it very hard to even challenge her politically. Uh, and we didn't challenge her in any other way. But we were targeted, we were, we were made into, uh, to be people who were aggressive and, uh, and, and disrespectful and, and all the rest. And it actually really wasn't true. And, of course, these articles were trying to say um, that, uh, you know, we, we, we'd, um, there was a hint, really, that uh, we, would, we were against Louise Elman because of her religion. And that isn't true at all. There was no basis to even make an accusation as wild as that. Uh, so I fought it. I fought it very hard. It took me nine months uh, I first took up a case with uh, the independent press standards, not having an awful lot of confidence in it, to be honest with you. I really didn't because it's not a very powerful body, but it's um, and it's financed by these big uh, uh, newspapers that are um, obviously owned by uh, millionaires, if not billionaires. So I really didn't have, but I did fight very, very, very hard. And um, I really did. It was hard work and very stressful. 
And the result was, was that uh, Ipso uh, forced the Jewish Chronicle uh, to print the longest adjudication any newspaper has ever had to publish because of the, the amount of lies. And um, I was absolutely um, delighted that they found in my favour and uh, delighted that they were so scathing of the Jewish Chronicle, but uh, also um, they were scathing of their conduct during the investigation, that they uh, wouldn't answer questions. And even when they had concrete evidence that what they'd said was a lie, they still didn't uh, offer or amend uh, or do a correction in their newspaper on any of them. And there were so many of the things that were um, that, that were wrong. So, you know, she was not bullied. Louise Elman was not bullied as they claimed. Now, what that means is that um, why did, you know, or the question you have to ask is, why did they have to uh, lie? If that was, if Louise Elman was being bullied to the degree that she was bullied out of the party, which they were her words, why did the Jewish Chronicle have to lie? I mean, that's the big gaping question, isn't it, surely? Uh, and I would like Keir Starmer. I would like uh, the Labour Party, uh, uh, echelon, you know, higher echelons of the Labour Party to ask that question and uh, be critical of um, the narrative that's do dominated um, the question of, you know, the differences between our MPs in, in constituencies like mine. It wasn't to do with religion, and I'll say consistently. And I've got evidence now that it wasn't to do with religion. It was to do with political differences. And the Jewish Chronicle decided that I would be an easy target. I would be, I'm an old woman, I don't hold a position, I'm uh, just a pensioner in Liverpool, and we'll, we'll get this one. And they thought they'd... Um, they discredit me and I'd, re I'd join the realms of these people who were who have been told they're anti-Semitic. And uh, I'm sorry I wasn't going to have it and I didn't have it. And then after that, I took them to court because, um, you know, all they had to do was print, print um, the adjudication. And I'm not being funny. That was no penalty whatsoever, was it? Absolutely no penalty. They should have been fined. They should have been made to apologise. They should have been exposed in every newspaper and on the television. They should have been on Newsnight. It should have been on the politics show. And you know what? Not even the local Liverpool Echo did a piece on it. Not one of them. And the only people I personally could rely on, people I could rely on, was social media. Um, the Canary Press Gang who were very helpful to me when I was fighting my legal case, uh, and um, Electronic Intifada, Asa Wynn Stanley, um, and uh, I'm sure there's others I can't remember, but they were absolutely excellent. They did really good uh, reports on it, and only for that nobody would know. I did get 20 seconds on Granada, BBC Granada reports. That's only because... I knew one of the reporters from my Stop the War years and he'd always been very fair and he knew I was straight and I really had to force him, push him and push him and his producer to do something on it. And, and, and that's the only thing that was ever printed, ever published on television, 20 seconds. Um, so, yeah, it was really worth fighting for, though. And I think it was a great victory. For, for other people to know that, well, hang on, it is worth having a, a fighting back against these people. Because when you fight back, you get a chance to win. And uh, it's great when you win because you've indicated and you also vindicate, I've indicated my constituency and I've vindicated the views of us on the left who, you know, we're not anti-Semites. We are... Um, fighting for a fairer world we're fighting against austerity and now we're living under the results of um you know these attacks now that we've got boris johnson 
in power instead of Jeremy Corbyn, who would have had a different priority altogether. So it's a criminal act that these pe- this newspaper did, as far as I'm concerned, and the people who fed the people who fed that newspaper, they are responsible in part for us having Boris Johnson manage in the interest of capital rather than the interest of ordinary working people. Well, well, yes, I got all my costs. I got an apology, uh, and uh, which again wasn't reported, but the Jewish Chronicle had to do it. And Twitter and social media, Facebook and so on took over and got it out there to some degree. Um, but yes, I, I, I won uh, damages. And with the, I don't want to say what the damages are, um, but um, they were substantial. And I'm giving every penny of that back to the movement. Um, and um, I'm going to, you know, uh, not probably shout about it, but, you know, obviously let people know that it came from if I, I give a thousand pound, for instance, to the uh, to the food bank, food bank recently for the, fa- you know, the fans, the sports, you know, the, the fans, the Liverpool and Everton football clubs, fans against uh, for, uh, for food banks, um, and I, I give them a thousand pound, and I, I know each time I'm going to be saying this is compliments of the victory. Uh, you know, the vindication of Riverside uh, constituents in me against the Jewish Chronicle, because um, I want to make that political point every time I I, I spend that money, because uh, I never did it for any money. Uh, I I did it uh, to expose the lies, and I think it will help get the message out there that the money's being used for the movement. It's, you know, for people in the movement, I've given money to to do different causes that um, I think will be politically, uh, will get political mileage out of, you know, in terms of um, using the money in a good way to fight back. People like Lee Harpin, who was the um, journal- journalist. Yeah, you know. Um, and uh, I, I, I want to also, I would really like to expose the people who fed that journalist these lies, because I do have evidence of who um, who fed the lies. Um, and one of them is a, a woman called um, Michelle Langham. I've got screenshots of her actually uh, tweeting directly to Lee Harpin um, uh, lies against me. So, you know, could I have a court case against her? Probably could. Well, definitely could. But the point is, can you be bothered? You know, little no mark who is feeding people like Lee Harpin. I mean, these people should be exposed. And um, I intend to expose them within the movement because um, they should be isolated. They've been played a, a dirty role in uh, discrediting our party. Uh, and uh, there are others. I mean, there was the um, ex-Lord Mayor is quoted in the Jewish uh, Chronicle, uh, Malcolm Kennedy. He's actually quoted in the Jewish Chronicle. Uh, he's a councillor still. And he's uh, he, he uh, is reported by the Jewish Chronicle as saying that it was like a Soviet show. The meeting was like a show, Soviet show trial. Well, that's been discredited, as far as I'm concerned, by the IPSO, the Independent Press Standards, saying, you know, we've we've heard a recording of the meeting, and Louise Elman wasn't interrupted. Louise Elman spoke in a normal voice. Nobody spoke over her. Uh, you could, and let's face it, you cannot ever describe that as a Soviet show trial outrageous to have said so and only discrediting fellow members so i uh, i think these people need to be um uh exposed for the things they're saying and um and and you know um make sure that if people are going to speak to the press that they they are honest in their dealings and don't deal with people like Sibley Harpin 
I mean, I don't know whether you know it, but Lee Harpin, um, you know, was uh, arrested uh, with regard to the uh, the phone hacking scandal. He actually sat in the dock. So, you know, not what I would say, not a pleasant man. And uh, why would you uh, fabricate things and then um, let, you know, put this in? And, and also, by the way, information... Um, you know, confidential information into the hands of um, of people like Lee Harpin to be twisted and turned and um, used against uh, the party, because that's the way I see it. It was the party that came under attack. Yes, we were suspended um, for a while. Uh, I think it was going on for 18 months. Um, and I just... I, I just um, think that whole period was um, really to to make us uh, ineffectual to, you know, to the start of uh, the very, very beginning of um, trying to make, um, you know, Riverside, uh, it's not like it's going to lock any credibility because these people are misbehaving and so on. And, um, and we were, you know, it's all done by an innuendo and smoking mirrors. So, Riverside was uh, couldn't meet for a long time, um, but we started. We 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 did all the campaigns, so you know, in that sense, it didn't stop us from um, supporting uh, people on the picket line for being against the the cuts to the fire service, which were being introduced by the Labour Council. You know, so it didn't stop us from building these campaigns and defending the women's hospital. Uh, supporting ISS workers who were fighting for sick pay in the hospitals. You know, all the things that um, we as a CLP should have been doing as individuals, well, the left were anyway, the left were out there, the real left, and we were out there campaigning. So although we couldn't function with resolutions and delegates and so on, we did, we did work very hard at uh, doing the best we could. Um, yesterday um, we heard... You know, we talk about reports, and this is an 860 page, as I understand, 860 pages. I think, uh, you know, we should have some transparency. Let's see the report. I want to see that report. The number of complaints I've made, and very legitimate complaints, but I must have looked like a crank over the years because I kept chasing and chasing and chasing them because they were never addressed. So... And there's people all around the country, I don't you remember, uh, Ian McNichol, he suspended 125,000 people who weren't allowed to vote. I mean, that's wholesale, wholesale witch hunt, isn't it, against new members? You know, it wasn't a rule that's been used before. Uh, so, yeah, it's gone on, and it's only gone on since this, we've had um, Jeremy Corbyn as the leader of the party. So we, we know what the politics the politic, political leaning of, of these um, um, investigations or lack of investigations. Uh, I think if you were a, a person on the left who complained uh, against somebody, uh, probably most likely on the on the right, you know, you were ignored and so on. But um, to do that, you know, you'd have to have staff that you could rely on. And I have no faith in the... Um, in the machinery, those who, ha who control the machinery, and I don't mean Jenny Formby here, I mean, you know, a lot of the, the regional officials and so on. I, um, from my own experiences and others around me, absolutely awful. So I don't know how we can expect them to, um, to do the right thing. Uh, I, I think people should, yeah, people should be um, reinstated. Because this does, this report does expose. There's been real failings in the in the compliance department. It's obvious from anyone who's ever had anything to do with the compliance department. We should be in, implementing the um, Chakrabarti report in full, and uh, it should be uh, on the lines of natural justice. And a lot of these cases should be reviewed. Absolutely, should be reviewed. But under those terms, not under the terms that exist now, and with people who really are independent and in the open, who said what against you? 
where did this quest where did this information come from where did who said that why are we answering things we don't even know uh, who the people are who our accusers are quite often we don't uh, we don't have any fairness and uh, I think um, it should all be reviewed after we've introduced absolutely in full the Chakrabarti report and the uh, Chakrabarti report and everything is actually um, open and transparent that you know what people like in a court of law for God's sake it's just uh, absolutely ridiculous that the Labour Party is a law unto itself. Um, do you, do well, actually, no, I don't have an awful lot of uh, faith in him at all. I just think, uh, we, you know, you're talking to Liverpool here. Uh, you know, we had uh, the Hillsborough and, uh, you know, I think um, you'll find that Keir Starmer's uh, doesn't come out well. Keir Starmer doesn't come out well on the the, the Hillsborough situation. Um uh, I think that alone makes us go, oh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of uh, faith in, in, in him doing that. But also, um, I think uh, he's been given, he's giving us no, in, no assurances uh, uh, that, um, you know, that he is going to do the right thing. I mean, I have um, contacted him over the IPSO. I don't know how many people have, have sent him the IPSO report. The uh, Jewish Chronicle apology, the, uh, the the result of the libel case, and um, you'd think it never happened. You'd think there wasn't one person in the country that uh, didn't have evidence, and that there is at least me and, and probably a, and a few others. But um, and that's a very very difficult thing to do and to ignore to ignore what's gone on already. It wouldn't fill you with um, with any confidence that he's going to do the right thing. Um, I've not heard him say anything about the Chakrabarti report. Um, he's um, he should be right behind it, shouldn't he? I mean, his role, um, you know, his legal prowess. You would think it would be the first thing he would want to do, and to assure members that um, you know the uh, the compliance unit, the investigation compliance unit, was fit for purpose. So I've got my fingers crossed, but I haven't got any high hopes. I mean, I've been on um, red watch and things like that, and threatened with my my life over the years. Uh, so I know how uh, innocuous it is and how dangerous it is. And I really uh, the only thing I'd have to say on it is that um, um, you know when people are accused of anti-Semitism. And uh, it's, you know, they're completely innocent. I mean, all that that does is, um, and I've said this about the Jewish Chronicle, it's not just discrediting that person, you know. It, what it's doing is it's, it's lying to the Jewish community, isn't it? So, you know, you're making them feel fearful. And that's such a that disgusting thing. To you know, to uh, under the guise of um, defending them, that you're making them feel fearful, or that people are resenting them when there is no resentment there. I mean, I think that's an awful crime, um, and uh, I feel very sorry for the Jewish community who do feel like that. And then, of course, there's other members of the Jewish community who who've also been victimised and and had the same thing said against them. And I've got friends who that's happened to, and it's just. Uh, it's appalling. So I think, you know, the divisiveness and um, the divisions that it's, this creates within communities uh, is disgraceful. But also the personal fear that you have when you talk about it like that, because people do get attacked. People, I've had people say to me, yeah, Audrey, you're a Jew hater. You're white. You're a Jew hater and you lie. And that's directly from the, these reports in the Jewish Chronicles. So to have your put, have yourself in your address put on a map somewhere is, um, you know, it's very poisonous. And I don't know how you fight it unless you can fight it legally uh, against it. It's quite often these things are hard to fight because they're done anonymously. Uh, so I don't know whether there's a legal way. I mean, you'd have to have a, a lawyer to have a look at that. But I would try and fight that uh, legally if um, or involve the police. 
because if you're being accused of a crime, which is it is, it's a criminal thing to be, uh, you know, uh, to discriminate against people on the basis of the religion, whatever that religion is. Uh, it's just terrible if you're if people are promoting uh, a map like that. Uh, I, I, and I think people should get, maybe get together and fight it. You know, everyone on that map should try and get together and fight it, join together. It's only really, you know, by being unified, trying to battle things uh, battle things on your own. It is hard. I've done it quite a few times in my life, but it's very hard and you need uh, solidarity. And um, if you've got people who are being un under attack in the same way, they should all get together and have a... a, a, a you know, then, then you can generally afford legal advice or you can go on mass to the police or make together make the same complaint or whatever and try and build yourself into a force. Well, <laughs> do you know what? I actually have been credited with that um, by a lot of people. Um, and the first thing I did say, to be honest with you, was that uh, I don't celebrate any workers um, losing their jobs. And I'm sure there's like people who make the tea and clean the floor and um, whatever. And um, there, there are, you know, just ordinary people who haven't got dirty hands. Um, and, you know, I would feel sorry for them. But um, I think they'll be better off working with a more prince to with a more principled employer. And, um, yeah, I'd like to think I played a, a, um, a small role in, uh, in it because I must admit they were humiliated by that um by that their defeat, you know, by that expose, if you like, of how, you know, how many lies they really did um, have to uh, print to, uh, you know, to try and support the, their own narrative that Louise Elman was uh, was bullied out the Labour Party. And I, I don't, I think without a doubt, it was exposed, um, you know, absolutely um, nailed these lies, the the, uh, the uh, independent press standards, and they were humiliated. And I think, uh, you know, they they were discredited um, roundly. And, the, you know, the fact that the independent press standard is also making a complaint against their behaviour within the independent press standards, I think that really did help to nail it. Um, but I think also they're discredited by many, many other um, findings against them, uh, but not quite as big as that one. I don't think. I think that 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 was quite a, quite a victory that I actually must say I'm very proud of. <laughs> well, it's nice. What we can do next is make sure that we fight for the ideas for, for socialist ideas within the Labour Party, and I think um, it's important that we keep doing that, but not like some of the soft left, you know who say that's all we should concentrate on. Um, we should also make sure that we fight every attack. I mean, I'm not one of these that says, oh, we've got to choose our battles. Sometimes you just have to fight back because it's so unjust. You don't wait for a Labour government. You don't wait, uh, you know, you don't wait till the law's changed. You have to use whatever means. When you see injustice, you fight it, and if you don't fight it, you'll never beat it. And I think if you can expose it, or you even feel proud of yourself for having had a fight back. So fight for socialism within the Labour Party, or whatever community group you you feel uh, concerned about, and that where you can spread the ideas of, of socialism. So whatever community group, whatever political organisation, you fight for radical change because the, what we're living under now, this coronavirus, has absolutely ripped up the whole idea that um, capitalism, you know, has any value today. It is absolutely ineffectual in fighting the virus. Capital is being put ahead of work, the lives of working class people. And that's got to be the mainstay of our fight now. Can you imagine years from now, oh, what were you doing during the coronavirus? Well, I know what I'm doing. I'm fighting for socialism. I'm fighting for the political ideas. I want to make sure that when this is over, that 
Boris Johnson, the Tory government and the establishment in this country is absolutely finished. And then we get a real socialist party and we've got to push these soft left leaders uh, who are uh, really will be teetering, you know, we won't know which way they'll be going. But I hope that they listen what's going on below because the working class people are sick of this situation and seeing people dying in their thousands around them. And we've got to make sure that we're a part of that battle on behalf of the working class.